do it. It's allowed to record. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, um, many books of prose by Rachel. Uh, continuing on with my relationship to her as a scholar, I simply wish to say that without Rachel's scholarship, its generous expansiveness and polymorphous reach and her simultaneously keenly felt sense of responsibility and response to the world outside the poem, I would have never been able to create my own scholarship with a strong sense of purpose and freedom. Without Rachel's presence and example, my entry into poetry criticism would have been both more narrow and more mean. It was as if Rachel as a scholar creating her initial work before I began my own enterprise had my back and my face. For it was Rachel who insisted that in bringing politics to poetry, we must read poetry as poetry. For Rachel, feminist critique did not dictate, but opened into unknown possibilities. From Rachel, I have felt that feminist revision would necessitate the multiple forceful and polyvocal invention of a completely new culture and the critical destabilizing, indeed, the replacement of the old. Today we are here to hear from Rachel as a poet, and it is as a poet that she was able to create her scholarship. The expanse and generosity in her scholarship is derived from her poetry writing. Of poetry, she writes, as a mode of practice, poetry is capacious of genre. By this, I understand Rachel to be saying that poetry subsumes other genres. Rachel writes, poetry allows and encourages the largest possible place for excess of meanings and implications to enter any given word or phrase. From 1986 to 2012, Rachel created her multi-volume long poem drafts. Her entry into drafts is compelling. Rachel tells that in her early writing, she was determined to write short iconic poems that demanded perfection. Then came the portal poem to drafts named writing. This is Rachel describing this poem. In writing, I absolutely quit the iconic poem, which represented the last bastion of the lyric for me. And I started to write non-iconic works called drafts. As a serial poem in 28 sections, writing, the poem writing, each section begins with a period. Each section of the poem is conceptualizing as existing on the period of conventional statement. On the pages of the poem, handwriting and typesetting exist alongside each other. And as Rachel remarks, thereby things become marginal to each other. I love this poem as a portal poem precisely because Rachel needs to put her own hand to the page to hand write it in part in order to change handwritten and type poem that leads her to begin her decades of writing drafts. Drafts culminated in three volumes of poetry, each titled with a different calling to poetry, Toll, Pledge, and Surge. Since then, Rachel has created multiple new books of poetry. 
I am counting seven, including collage works that bear actual material artifacts and a new multi-volume series, Traces with Days. This series includes days and works around the day in 80 worlds and late works and other books yet to come. The Traces series can be distinguished from drafts in their increased visitations to the everyday and to what is passing and what remains. By way of conclusion, here are just a few statements, some segments from days and works. Everything being detail and linkages, I am oversaturated. The examined life is too complicated to live. The domain of the ethical is also the domain of the ordinary. Have all your voices, have all your people talk to each other. Okay, so here's Rachel. Oh my, after all of that, it's going to be, now I think, well, I should go and write another book or something. Anyway, it's a pleasure, and I wanted to thank Jean particularly for um, what I would call merciful extra help about with Zoom, which I found baffling to a degree that is unlikely. Um, and also thank you to Ray. I'd like to actually uh, read from some of those books that uh, at the end that you were mentioning. I'd also like to mention that you actually quoted one of the lines from one of the poems that I was hoping to read, so whatever. Okay, this book, uh, it's so much fun to put your book in front of a screen, is called Late Work, and it's, it was published quite recently this year, Black Square Editions, which um, calls for a remarkable thanks to John Yao, a remarkable poet. I'd like to read a, at least one long work from this, an 11th section poem called Angelus Novus. The second section of this poem quotes from Walter Benjamin, as you might imagine, the relevant and familiar passage, but it quotes it in a different translation than we're used to, a translation still by Harry Zone, but um, a more recent one, apparently. Angelus Novus, one. It's a strange angel, a new and improved angel. Chicken-footed claws and feather fingers, a perfect poultry type. Raglan, sleevy wings with a sigh, nudge, hmm, him, her, it, they. Ange, or angelos, an angular build. Spikes poke, out, poke halfwise as its puzzle parts, triangles, churches, knife blades, and or mountains. Triage, a wire lines the shadow of its doubled half-toned self. It stands in clarity. It stands in blur. Its face is a scroll, or maybe a lion with intelligent snout. You'd think, given strength and virtue, things might just work out. But its animal eyes fly to the side, crooked right, left askew, slid to where the remnants brew. This is your body on fear. This is your body on dread. Eyes pop out of its head. Eyelids widen and pupils dilate. Hair rises, muscles vibrate. Though it shudders, it is fixed. It's staring at the wrong ends of pickup sticks. Two. There is a painting by Clay called Angelus Novus. It shows an angel who seems about to move away from something he stares at. His eyes are wide, his mouth is open, his wings are spread. 
This is how the angel of history must look. His face is turned toward the past. Where a chain of events appears before us, he sees one single catastrophe, which keeps piling wreckage upon wreckage and hurls it at his feet. The angel would like to stay, awaken the dead, and make whole what has been smashed. But a storm is blowing from paradise and has got caught in his wings. It is so strong that the angel can no longer close them. This storm drives him irresistibly into the future to which his back is turned, while the pile of debris before him grows toward the sky. What we call progress is this storm. Three, to ask which way the wind is blowing is not a 60s joke. This says it's from a paradise generating wreckage, but suctioning backward to the future. To ask in what way its wings will ever close is not another joke. The wreckage lies in the same quarter in front of it as paradise. What dreck is coming from the blast? Will the future be the same as this wrecked past? Four. Some questions? Some answers. What does have the power? A storm. A power surge. From whence? From paradise. And where is this paradise? Yes, ask. Is it coming in the future or looking in the past? Is paradise the goal before us or the theological back? The messianic will, says paradise glimmer, is coming forth, full Monte Futurial. While paradise was, clue glittery shimmer, once angel's home, this paradise is modern and gives rise to storms. It's not a place of peace, but turbulence. How can this be? Is every image wrong? Is paradise malign? Is angel powerless? Are these names obsolete, flat, functionless? We seize up, freeze up, thesis, antithesis, paralysis. Five, almost the same. Why does this angel have fewer powers than us? We perceive a chain of events. It perceives debris. We project a narrative linkage. It perceives catastrophe. Why is the wreckage apparently invisible? I mean, not rendered in this scene. Did everything shift in the twisting swirl of a funhouse twirl called history? In the realm of angels, is there no logic, no cause and effect, nothing syllogistic? Is the answer, yes, not. How to imagine the motives of any angels? Then how do these get thwarted? And by what? The angel would like to stay. Its mission to institute justice by heavenly fission. Nonetheless, it is doomed to hover paralyzed inside this ever darkening loss, which is whatever comes when winds from so-called paradise double their force. Six, this thing is not a picture exactly. It is one monoprint, unrepeatable. Mainly not to illustrate, but to parallel us and travel together. These glyphs are flat as forms of fate. Ledgers, unreadable records, accounts of days barely having time to leave their ugly detritus before more arrives. 
the stakes that high were always so almost unrepresentable unrepresentable is everything that's why you might say that benjamin's glyph taken from clay is illogical if you can't represent this you just can't but there's the joke it is what it is like i am i am stuck in the throat so what's to say in the face of all this let them eat cake let them choke seven consider cinders consider the badger bludgeoned irreducible implacable inadequate insightful not enough never enough but enough after all enough to be unbearable already ruins the line tightens can the right words get gasped out get grasped shards on this shard pile testify eight my vocabulary didn't do anything in the way of killing me decent light bulb that had angel wings wired on it and it was style pretty pricey a designer fixture cute a plain old light bulb and some white feathers almost a cartoon but it was true do angels have money hold it that wasn't the question but i couldn't read my scribble this was it do angels have memory just a note straight out of dante the desire for brightness and luminosity compared with our diurnality they don't go into our darkness except when given a mission and then they never stay but who really cares about angels except you've just spent a few hours in yet another museum although it is nice to see them wander around the world in the imagination of various cultures those pretty and elegant androgynes whose feathery wings are sometimes covered with eyes if they had that many eyes and all those rainbow stripes they probably didn't need either memory or money they simply give the message they have been given someone tweeted don't bomb syria glitter bomb russia do you remember this it was a specific moment plus i just learned about mica it's mined almost exclusively by children 12 and under in india and often mined illegally where does this leave us or actually in our part of this our collective world where does it leave anyone nine we live amid documents a new batch every day vital to document something of what we are seeing hence a poetry not solely poetry do i have to spell this out we are on energy alert but on a short fuse for quick illumination so then the poles swerve to depression with disgust swerve back practically electrocuted with despair and reanimated jolts of force more power plus unsought powerlessness our angel was once rooted in its clarity of purpose and grew in light but that brand of angel declined was withdrawn from the market ripped from its root wrenched out of shifting soil and in straining winds thus the angel found itself deep flung across the place once home splayed and played out it got worn raggedy and frightened and so it looked like us the angel us yes spell it out 
10. A project is a desire altering itself as it goes, shadowing the names it thought it had, tracing the words behind the words, which are the only ways to know. To live among quotations makes everything exegesis, which ennobles solemnity and convergence. One pitches down the incline of the scroll. Interpretation is a mode of clarity and maybe very loosely reverence, destiny. 11. We live in nomadic unfulfillment. Therefore, I am the philologist of the trace and I am not I, hello, goodbye. To read trace is violation. Not to read disvalidates whatever the mark might give. We stare at the plethora of texts. The trace is a smudge of flattened historical time, a sullying, hedge spaces, the hard to clean grease of endlessly bad politics, ecologies fucked or challenged to breaking. Persons like numbers, but unnumbered, picking at shards, thrown off by cataclysm, lying among those broken parts, and speaking in the voices of the dead. So, 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 speak, nothing. Again, nothing. What is beyond that sublime? Something for which there is no genre, but swiveling pressures on words from words, blowing and blasted at every turn like mini angels. The time of now is palpable. It is the source. Tense and restless, twisted lot and cowed. Is it possible to vow? To gather up our nothingness as force to enter the dark tunnel of our time once more? Now, that was that. Um, I thought, let's see, I had a plan and I, I can't hardly read it, but anyway, I thought I would read the title poem, but I still would like you to buy this book, Late Work. This is in, um, in five parts. Okay, Late Work. One, we meant what we said when we said we were running after language as if we could never catch up. It was so fast and the ground so distracting. So now what? We're older. Can we now afford now to stop running? Or must we make time even faster, faster? What is the answer? look under storms, or even ask the dead, since we are closer. Two, are you crazy? Necromancy is forbidden. This to be said sternly and panicked, given the temptations of rolling dice, casting sorts, reading cards, drawing lots, scoping, Stars for who, faced with the future, would not choose to try a little something. Crystals at the ready, even the charm, the charms of a charm chanted to the zodiac. Is late work enraged or is it pensive? Is late work the same or is it different? Is late work fulfilled? Frustrated, fusty, grateful, unreasonable, sickened, 
or akimbo. Late work has no time to spare, breaks into torment, no care for wounding, only making. Late work cannot heal, rips asunder, late work beyond, late work under, late work, fate work, fate work, late work. Three. The dead, awaiting these visitors, ready their workshop, playing themselves down. We touch their curly wood shavings, fondly sniff that resiny smell. Ugh, too much. Poor. Thus rebuffed, some of them sink, sulk, plumb line in small places, stuffed sinkholes emit a whistling sound. Others find the liminal shunt an otter hold on collapsed distance and flush back and forth through the pipeline, blowing intensely like curtains in a beach house, chatty and self-centered as ever. Amplification is their middle name. They want to tell you more than you can ever figure out or figure in. Do I know you? You seem familiar, they say, while plus regrets in patois, sententious, particularistic, every third word unhearable, mumbled in different directions. They're swiveling their heads right around. Often, they come back younger, which considering the condition they left in, is all to the good. Five, earth, air, wood, luminosity. So now I look to draw some water. The faucet's loose, the screws stripped, valve unfixable, pressure down to trickle. This whole system needs a wrench. Late work, I think we're on our own now. Okay. Um, Days and Works was published in um, 2017 and it's now not out of print, but the publisher went out of publishing. That is a Sada Press, to whom I'm very grateful, uh, uh, gave me all the rest of its books because it, it got folded. So if anybody wants a book, um, please let me know. I'm not kidding. Okay, I'd like to read, um, oh, okay, this book is, uh, based on Hesiod a little bit, and that is its days and works. So Hesiod is the one place apparently in the ancient world, I didn't know this, where um, the Pandora myth occurs. It's the only place that that's mentioned. Now, if I could find this, I'd be a lot happier, yes. So this kind of takes off from days and works. It's a little hard to explain. Um, it has a lot of newspaper clippings, for example. The page was shattered by stars as the light slowly greened, blued, and faded to deep gray. Then star by star, the night sky filled up with itself. So I opened the box that I had received. Inside was a beautiful, long snake, cobalt blue, with turquoise green diamonds down to its back. Brilliant, startling, and it froze me with wonder. In that brief time, it slithered out and down the cellar stairs. I should have slammed the box shut first. Now there it hides among the junk, the books, in the working innards of the house, pipes, dust flaking from the concrete, 
cold walls and broken furniture. In the shallow dark, it comes and goes as it alone desires. Back and forth, it stalks the several cellar rooms. I wonder whether I should kill it. Even thinking of this option proved almost impossible, much less doing the task, for I could not tell if this were the task that I was called to do. The only rationale for this desire was fear. Besides, how would it happen? Could I really do it? With what tool? How could I manage any part of this attack, such a beauty, exactly my birthstones? And why did I think that killing was the way? Should I try to put it back in the box, luring it to be retrapped? What would tempt a free snake to come back? These dilemmas were impossible to solve. There was no way to coordinate any capture. What was my role? What was my vocation? There was no outsmarting such a snake. It's hard to figure out how to go. Okay. Uh, in honor of Jean's doing that, I'm going to read two more from this, and you will recognize one of them. Proverbs. Write with the threads visible. Insouciant skibbling still needs to have backbone. No one should say, you know, I have more tools in my basement than you do, but they are allowed to think it. Have all your people, have all your voices talk to each other. One could have poetry printed on labels for jars of honey, but why only on honey? A succinct minimalism seems best. Too bad this is not it. A hole penetrates the page, a pinhole. A little black smudge came onto the page accidentally, unerasable. These are the sources, sorcerers. There is no hole as such. One curlicue, one excessive note, mark, intonation, interpretive or suggestive cadence, one bit of fancy or willfulness, and the whole exceeds itself, displaces its ideal state. All books are therefore of another mind. Just keep on looking. More advice. The green piping. The green piping is best. To spin the poles of no and yes, take a deep breath backward. Let nothing become mannerism. Do not get into an eating contest with your father, but forget about implausible exorcisms. Go for the plausible. It's a loose form, a loose forum. The stakes that high were always so. Knock, knock forever. Then reach forward and open the door. I think this might be the most badly timed reading I've ever done in my life. <laughs> and it has something to do with Zoom, which 
I just like Zoom, you're good, but darn. Okay, what I would like to do is read um, one more long poem and a couple of short poems, but it just seems like it, it's either not, it's either too long or not long enough. So that's the reader's delusion, of course. I'd like to read again from late work. There's a poem in here called Shepherd's Calendar, which of course is a shepherd's calendar, meaning it's one poem for every month. And since we're in May still, I'd like to read May. Uh, and I think, uh, I would do a little, a little pedantic thing here. I think many of you will, un will, will understand and know which poem this draws on of the panoply of world poems. May. The fate of one's specificity becomes the trace for another. Crossing and recrossing, but traveling forward. A ferry is comforting. It appears as the same journey. Pulse and reverse. Replay, double ply, reply. Play, fast forward. The same, yet different. A paradox of time. The ferry seems just going back and forth but always actually keeps going forward. I'm ignorant of what you will see and hear, but I wish you well, my future friends, crossing on that sloshy ferry, just like once me. Let these words dissolve into pools of unknowing and what are in fact mutual recognitions attenuated. The ferry goes back. You go forth, as once I did. The physics of hope involves witness and a toneless sort of wordy song to mutter almost silently, perhaps a precarious strategy. Yet it offers incitement to push on to the next most useful and engaged between that you can imagine, just as I tried to, evoking you're going forth as interleaved with mine. To offer comradeship right across time. I'm gonna close with a, a couple of um, worlds from Around the Day in 80 Worlds, um, which was published in 2018 by Blaze Vox, Jeffrey Gatza um, deserves many thanks for giving heart when I was not too full of heart. So these are little poems for the most part. And they're scattered, so. Why put one more word into the world? Especially one more word after the end of the world. That feeling of now and here is dramatic sentimentalized, but contains a real terror seated inside it. Though now time is not no time, not precisely. That's too extreme. But something's going on. What is it? What is the meme? I always have to remind people that just about everything that's in print is written um, like before last summer, before the summer before, before all the times we've been through recently. Every finding contains its particular singular, personal, own interrogation, sometimes chilling. Every finding contains its particular singular, personal, own interrogation. Sometimes this is chilling, but the pretty and the poetic 
are not a goal. Even consolation and elegy aren't. So, cope. That shop sign just below South, just above Bainbridge, is definitive. We cheat everyone and pass the savings on to you. Low cloud, rain so misty, can't make out the famous mountain but it's a great view anyway, because I get to see a wet mist loosely swaying, layers of gray air davening in droplets. Some of these begin with citation. Poetry can extend the document. Addendum. Poetry might also constitute the document. This work is set up as a fragment, no matter if it extends into infinity. These poems remain incomplete even after completion. A dis trademark mean when they say a poem is never finished, it is only abandoned. Something, a speck floating on the black white sea. The random, the random fallen into reality. A cabaret. What have I done? It's yet again to sing. The world, the world in time. Will they miss us terribly? The Orphic hope of getting a stone to talk. The other hope to be as silent as it. This is the dilemma, the wheel on which to break yourself as poet. That strict binary comprises one complete circular option. Another option to encourage or discover many extremely chatty stones. Thank you to all you chatty stones out there. <laughs>